you have these influencers that all they do is travel around the world and go to these different parks and then people follow them and recreate these pictures that they've taken and very it's it's uh very seldom that the conversation comes up about anything like leave no trace or exactly um exactly understanding that role um that you have there's actually a couple of funny instagram accounts now that call people out on this um i can't remember the names of them off the top of my head um but they're they're pretty funny um they'll find people that are posting pictures where they're clearly off trail they've got dogs whatever that aren't on leashes and um and they'll just call them out and explain you know the effects that they're having and try to make an example of them so it gets into people's consciousness you know that like hey yeah it's nice that you're going and taking a pretty picture of this you know natural area but yeah you're also killing it at what um, cost yeah right yeah, yeah yeah well and that gets back to what i was saying earlier jason is is the fact that you have these influencers and we're in such this image driven society now those influencers are getting people out to nature that probably right. didn't go before. And that's super important. That's something that is really hard to achieve. But I would argue it's their responsibility as influencers, not just to get people out there, but to establish some sort of guideline. I mean, maybe their posts just have a little stock leave no trace thing on them or something. It right. to make people aware that there's there are issues, that, that places mm -hmm. can be loved to death because you know, getting people out there is like 75%. But once they get there, if they're destroying it, that, that makes every, all that 75% useless. So yep. yeah, I think, it, I think it honestly falls upon people like those influencers to establish a good baseline. And then it's up to people like us who are conservationists, who aren't social media influencers to kind of steer things in the right direction, I think. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking is maybe that can be a role we can play at some point in the future of trying to present some very simplified content um, to people on social media networks and everything that says, hey, if you're going to be going to these places and encouraging people to travel and visit these places, that's awesome. But will you please post this, you know, block of content that explains how to respect that area and everything and uh, maybe that can have some impact. I think it can. And the more positive, you know, it's funny that, that people are doing the sort of shaming. And honestly, I am guilty of that a lot. <laughs> um, I'm definitely guilty of shaming people. But, you know, a much more effective approach is, you know, taking the time to understand that that so many people have no, a lot of them just don't have experience. How, mm -hmm. you know. We, we have this lifetime of experiences that's got us to this place and they might not. So it's understanding that and, um, you know, meeting yeah. where they're at and just saying, hey, you, you did this, that's okay, but next time here's, here's the situation. So right. um, it's hard though, it's hard. I mean, so many places, there isn't really a lot of wiggle room. It's like once a few right, people right. off trail in the tundra, it's ruined. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a very tough, um, tough problem to solve. And I don't really have a great, like, this is the solution. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think there is a, a quick solid solution. It's something that there are going to be degradation effects that are just inevitably going to play out over time as we try to improve our relationship with, uh, with the land and all of the organisms that are part of these networks. And so, you know, it's, it just, comes down to trying to make that sort of devastation as little as possible um, and as slow as possible. Um.